Hello, Mr. White here, and this video is on evaluating trig functions on the xy plane. And like the last video, you do not need your calculator for this. Uh, if you want to use a calculator to check the results that you get, I'm fine with that, but nothing that we're going to do here requires the calculator. Uh, from a previous video, we looked at our special acute angles, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, and we converted them to radian, and you should know the numbers, the whole numbers that are underneath these boxes here. Uh, you should know that 30 degrees is pi over what? I hope you're thinking 6. 45 degrees is pi over 4, and 60 degrees is pi over 3. Uh, I'm also going to start calling all the multiples of these acute special angles. I'm going to call them special as well, now that we're getting on to the broader xy plane, into the other quadrants. So for example, if I said 5 times 30 degrees, um, which gives me 150 degrees, um, that brings me into the second quadrant, and I'm going to call that special as well. Well, if I multiply the right side by 5, remember that the 5 only goes in the numerator, and I get 5 pi over 6. And again, in radian measure, I'm going to say that that's a special angle as well in the second quadrant. And the same is true for uh, the other special angles as well. And likewise, I'm going to bring into the picture 90 degrees, which is pi over 2 radians, and 180 degrees, which is pi radians. I'm going to call those angles and all their multiples special angles as well. Uh, the reason I brought these all here onto one screen is because I want you to get familiar with seeing those uh, denominators there. Uh, because anytime you see any of these denominators, some pi over 6, something pi over 4, anytime you see any of these denominators, or you just see a multiple of pi, a whole number or, or an integer multiple of pi with no denominator, that is your dead giveaway that you are dealing with special angles and that you do not need a calculator to evaluate the trig functions, sine, cosine, etc. Uh, the inverse of that is also true. So whereas those, those denominators that I showed were um, dead giveaways that you're dealing with special angles, if you don't see those denominators, if you see a denominator other than those specified ones that I showed you, then you know you are not dealing with a special angle, and you really do need a, a calculator to evaluate the trig functions. So uh, let's jump right in, and let me try to back up that claim that I just made, that we don't need a, um, a calculator. So notice that this is one of our special denominators, and we have a multiple of that pi over 3 special angle. Uh, let's ignore the trig function itself, and we really just need to start by identifying where is 4 pi over 3. That was the topic of our last video, so I'm going to try to summarize that real quickly here. If you recall, I got rid of the y-axis, and I um, see cut my pi, my, my half pizza into three pieces. The denominator told me to cut the half pizza into three pieces. So let me just freehand that. Um, and likewise, I will cut the bottom half of the pizza into three pieces. And then I'll count off 4 pi over 3. And remember, we're going in the positive direction. So 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3. And this is where I would argue that drawing a reasonable picture um, is, is very important. Because by drawing a reasonable picture, when I, draw, uh, when I complete my triangle by drawing a vertical line to the x-axis, um, even if I'm repeating myself, I'm, I'm, I think it's worth doing. Remember, we will never draw a horizontal line to the y-axis. We will never, ever, ever do that. That will give us incorrect results. So I want to draw my vertical line to the x-axis. And when I have drawn a reasonable sketch, I would argue that we can distinguish the steep 30, 60, 90 degree triangle from the shallow one. Those are terms that I'm going to use frequently in class and in the video. And what I'm referring to is the fact that there is another 30, 60, 90 degree triangle in this quadrant that looks like this. That could be our 30, 60, degree, 30, 60 90 degree triangle, right? But it is a different, uh, has a different orientation and will give, it, give us different trig functions. Uh, so when you draw a reasonable picture, we can distinguish that this is the 60 degree angle, this is the 30 degree angle, and therefore, this is the uh, side length of 1, this is the side length of root 3, and this is the side length of 2. Uh, 
I hope you, you can tell me which ones of those numbers are negative. Remember, we are on an xy plane, and therefore this would be negative and this would be negative. And I also want to point out and reiterate from the last video that these correspond to our x and y values. If we consider where this point right here is on the xy plane, our x value is negative 1, our y value is negative root 3. And to be consistent with the book, I'm going to call the hypotenuse r there. And I'm going to remind you that x always uh, gives us the adjacent side, y always gives us the opposite side, no exceptions, and r always gives us the hypotenuse. Therefore, when I've got this picture and I've got it accurately labeled and numbered, when I ask, uh, when we look at the cosine function and say, what is the cosine of 4 pi over 3? We know that is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be negative 1 over 2, and that is our answer. I want to point out something. A lot of students get confused by this, and they say, wait a minute, this angle right here is not 4 pi over 3. I don't get it. That angle is only 60 degrees or pi over 3. That's, that's really just the way it works, though. Remember, this angle right here was 4 pi over 3, but we use this triangle here. It's called a reference triangle. That's the picture. That's the triangle that gives us our, our trig values, the cosine, sine, etc. So if there's any confusion on that, please stop by office hours. This is a hugely important point that uh, you really need to master as, as soon as possible. Let's do another one. Cosecant of negative 5 pi over 4. I don't really need to um, erase or, or get rid of the y-axis here because it turns out when I cut my half pizza into four equal pieces, the y-axis does represent one of those cuts. And I will do the same with the bottom half. Cut it into four pieces. And now when I do negative 5 pi over 4, remember it's negative, so I will not go in this direction. I will go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5 pi over 4. I will draw my vertical line to the x-axis. That is one of the most frequent mistakes, so I'm going to repeat myself. Always a vertical line to the x-axis. Never draw this triangle. And I, put my, um, I recognize that as my 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. So even though this is technically the angle that I'm evaluating, I'm focusing on this triangle here. Uh, it has side lengths of 1, 1, root 2, but we're on the xy plane, so this is negative and um, the other two are positive. I'll remind you, hypotenuse is always positive, no exceptions. It's only the, um, it's only the adjacent and the opposite that get to be negative depending on the quadrant they're in. So reminder again, hypotenuse corresponds to r, opposite corresponds to our y value, um, adjacent corresponds to our x value. Those are the x and y values of this point right here. And now I ask myself, what is cosecant? Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse. So uh, cosecant needs to be hypotenuse over opposite, which is square root of 2 over 1. Or I can simply write square root of 2 and call that my answer. All right, hope you're getting the hang of this. Uh, let's have you try. Oh, I forgot I had this in here. Um, this is the chart in the book. I didn't want to lead off with this because I don't want you to think you're just memorizing this. But I do think it'd be useful for you to turn to this page right now. If we're still using the sixth edition of our pre-calculus book, turn to page 375. And now when you look at this chart, I hope you can correlate that with what I just showed you and, um, and make sense out of it. And if you can't, come on by to office hours and let's figure it out. Um, but again, please don't memorize this chart. I simply ask that you look at it and verify that it really makes sense to you with what we've just uh, looked at. All right, now you try. I'll pause the video, please, and evaluate these without a calculator. All right, I'm trusting you've done your duty here. Let me uh, show the answers. OK, so the sine of negative pi over 3 is negative root 3 over 2. The tangent of 7 pi over 6 is 1 over root 3. Or if you are stuck in that habit of rationalizing the denominator, you can say root 3 over 3. That's fine. Um, this is, by the way, the, uh, I have an inf infamous unit circle test that I always give on the first day of AP calculus class. Student's summer assignment is to master 
these trig functions on the xy plane. And I expect that you could do these when you get really practiced at it, that you can do these in, in uh, under 30 seconds, well under 30 seconds. If you really get good at it, you'll find that it's not too hard to do it in 10 to 15 seconds. I know that sounds awfully optimistic right now, but trust me, every year with enough practice, many students do it. All right, uh, let's take a look at these quadrantal angles. Quadrantal angles, uh, we're basically going to do this, have the same goal here of evaluating um, uh, uh, trig functions of angles, but this time we're going to look at quadrantal angles, which are angles that, whose terminal side is on the edge of two quadrants. So this right here is a quadrantal angle, 90 degrees or pi over 2. This pi radians, or 180 degrees, is also a quadrantal angle. Um, it works the same way if I go in the negative direction. So negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, negative 2 pi, negative 5 pi over 2. These are all quadrantal angles when you, and when you uh, land on the edge of a quadrant. All right. Um, the challenge here is that we have to imagine, we have to use our imaginations in, in dealing with these triangles here, because technically, it doesn't really look much like a triangle. Uh, when dealing with a quadrantal angle, let me start with the one at zero radians. I prefer to draw it as a triangle. Just a, uh, I, try to, I prefer to draw it just slightly off the axis, even though I know that's not technically accurate. I like to visualize it as a triangle, and I just remind myself that that's really perfectly flat. And therefore, this does not really have any length. That really is just zero in length. Um, now, as far as what to call the uh, adjacent and the hypotenuse sides, um, I could really call them whatever I want. I mean, I could call this a length of 5, um, but th the point is that whatever length this hypotenuse is, this adjacent, when it's perfectly flat, is exactly the same length. So that would have to be 5, too. Now, I don't usually use 5. I'll, I'll use, well, let me just make this point real quickly. Notice that the ratios will be the same. Um, if I were to take the cosine of this angle, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, 5 over 5 would give me 1. And so like I said, I don't normally use 5. I would normally just go with 1. But again, even if I did choose some other number other than 1, the ratios would be the same. So I want to remind you again, this is the opposite, or the y value. The x value is our adjacent. The hypotenuse, even for quadrantal angles, we still follow the same convention. The hypotenuse, r, is 1. And when I um, pull a problem up here, what's the sine? Oh, sine of negative pi over 2? Well, I'm going to have to look at one of my other quadrantal angles, right? So I hope that one made sense. Let's do the same thing. I'm going to do it very quickly for this uh, negative pi over 2 quadrantal angle. And that tells me I need to deal with this triangle down here, right? So let me pull that again. I just prefer to pull it slightly off the axis. Uh, students often ask me, do I have to draw it on a certain side? Could I draw it over on this side instead? It really doesn't matter which, uh, which side you draw it on, because remember, whether you draw it on this side or whether you draw it on this side, that adjacent side is really 0, whatever side you draw it on. We're just using our imagination or, um, and, and saying this is a triangle. And we draw it as a triangle, but it really has a, a value of 0. So, I'm just going to pick a side here and roll with it. Um, the main difference here is that well, I'll just go with 1. But the main thing to recognize is that the opposite can be negative. The hypotenuse will never be negative. So again, this opposite y value is negative 1. This adjacent x value is 0. And this hypotenuse has to be positive. And when I ask myself, what is the sine of negative pi over 2? That is opposite over hypotenuse. That is negative 1 over positive 1, or just negative 1. Uh, at the risk of repeating myself too often, I'll remind you again, do not draw this triangle. That would screw up your values. I'd ask you to maybe consider what, would, what answer would you get if you drew that triangle instead. And you'll find that you do not get the correct answer of negative 1 if you draw that triangle. All right. Um, one more, cotangent of pi. Uh, I hope you're getting the hang of this, but just to make sure, we realize that that's over here, right? If I draw it slightly off, I'll say that this is negative 1 for my adjacent, positive 1, and 0 for my hypotenuse and opposite, respectively. 
adjacent, um, hypotenuse, opposite, and cotangent, that is the reciprocal of tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. So cotangent is adjacent over opposite. And look what happens. We get negative 1 over 0. Now, rather than write negative 1 over 0, the answer that you really want to put as your final answer is just undefined. So for quadrantal angles, sometimes your answer will result in 0 in the denominator. We'll just call that undefined. All right, your turn. Uh, pause and try these four. They may or may not be quadrantal angles. All right, here are the solutions. Uh, again, I know this is a little bit cluttered, but I wanted to include a diagram here for your reference, just in case you did not get these answers for A, B, C, and D. If you're having any trouble at all, please make it a priority to come by. This is uh, um, really crucial stuff for what we're going to be doing throughout the second and third quarter.